message. Uh, you know, because we're in this series with, uh, with David. And I was reminded this morning by the Lord that um, in the book of Ruth, I don't know if you remember in Ruth, but, you know, that special moment where, where uh, you know, uh, Naomi's children are, have passed away. And one of the daughter-in-laws, Ruth, uh, she says, you know what, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with you. And, and, and your God will be my God and your people will be my people and, and your land will be my land. And, and she makes this powerful statement and she, she goes with her. And Ruth marries Boaz, you know. And, and Boaz, they have, you know, children of their own. And then it's important because Ruth was from a Moabite. How many remember that? She was a Moabite. So she was not even part of the people of God. Now, fast forward generations ahead. And David is running from Saul. And David, he's running from his life. And he's, you know, he's, he's having a hard time with Saul. And he's just... He's just being, he's being uh, just looked after and trying to, to get him. And the word, the, Lord of the, God, the word of God says that he sends him to the cave of Adullam, right? And he goes there, but he's worried about his family. He's like, because his family, uh, because he was being uh, sought off to be killed, his family was also being sought off to kill. So he's like, what am I going to do with my family? And the word of God says in 1 Samuel 22 that he actually, he goes to the Moabite king who was an enemy of the Israelites, by the way. But he goes to the Moabite king and he tells them, hey, I'm calling in a favor. And he tells them, I need you to take care of my family while I deal with the situation. And the Moabite king, he takes in his family. Now, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that it says from, in your favor, be before you for a thousand generations. See, he was calling in a favor that had been affected when Ruth told Naomi, your God will be my God, your land will be my God, your father will be my father. And see, Ruth couldn't think generations ahead, but God thinks generations ahead. And he said, one day you're going to need, you're, you're going to need, you're going to have to cover his family. One day your seed is going to be in trouble and I'm going to call in a favor because of what you established here. I'm going to do it over here. You understand what I'm saying? This is when you, when you declare these words for your children, for your family, you don't even know what's happening in the realm of spiritual. But God says you may not see it. As a matter of fact, you might not even live to see it because Ruth didn't live to see it. But it happened because God's word is real and he ain't no man to lie. Amen. And what, what was affected here happened over here. You don't know what you're doing when you're being a blessing to somebody. And you're saying, you know what, I'm going to be a blessing here. And you don't even know or realize it, but sometimes down the road, your children are going to get stuck. And God says, don't worry, because dad did something over here. Grandma did something over here. And because they did it over here, I'm going to do it over here. Because they acted over here, now it's my turn to act over here. When you sing these songs, you're opening something so powerful. You're establishing blessings of generations to generations to come. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, I pray that every person in this place would sing with understanding. That they would sing, Father God, that this is not just a, a beautiful song with beautiful lyrics and beautiful music. Father God, this is your word that we're speaking out. This is your word that we're singing out with our hearts. And Father God, we need to understand, Father God, that what we're doing as we walk with you, Father God, we're establishing things that our generations up ahead will see. And we're going to establish, Father God, and we're going to go through some hard moments in our life so that one day our generations can call in your favor of something that was established because of my faith now. They will live out their faith then. And I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you do something mighty and powerful as we declare in our generations your favor and your blessings. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Do you receive that? Woo. We can go home already if we wanted to right there. Praise God. Would you open your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel 17? It's a pleasure to be doing this series uh, with you uh, th this, this few weeks. Amen. We're giving a, a chance for our, our lead pastors here at the English service to relax a little bit, chill, regroup. 
Amen. So be praying for them. Amen. Gl glory to God. Uh, this is such a, a good time for all of us. Praise God. 1 Samuel 17, verse 28. 1 Samuel 17, verse 28. When you, say it, when you have it, say, I got it. Or you can say amen if you don't feel, if you feel a little more comfortable saying amen. 1 Samuel 17, 28. We have it. It says, and I want to read a couple of portions. We're going to go there. It says, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when, when he spake unto men. As a matter of fact, I'm using the, I forgot to tell you, I'm using the, the original King James Version. It says the KGB. Yeah. KJV. I just said KJV like the Russians. Nobody Russian here, right? Uh, so I'm using that version just because uh, of what, of, of what uh, some of the words that we want to really understand this morning. Uh, so I'm using the King James Version in English. It says, and Eliab, his eldest, this is a very hard version, I, I can't even say it right. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard him when he spake unto the man. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why cometh thou down hither? And with whom have thou left thou few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down and thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I now done? Isn't there not a cause? And he turned from, his, he turned from him toward another and spake over the same manner. And the people answered him again with the, for, with the former manner. And when the words were heard with David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with these Philistines. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he had defined the armies of the living God. And David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, and the Lord be with thee. Verse 38 and 39. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on a, a, a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And, and David put them off in him. God bless his word. You may be seated. We're seeing a time here in David's life where he's uh, uh, about to be, uh, get one of probably the, perhaps the biggest challenges of his life. He's going to go after, he's going to go up against the mighty Mighty warrior of the, of the Israelites, this story we know so well. And when he gets to the camp, you know, remember his dad sends him off to take some bread and cheeses to check on his brothers and see how they were doing. The word of God says that as he got there, you know, he heard what was going on. He saw what was going on and it stirred in him that passion. It stirred in him that desire to say, hey, this just can't be. This is... This is my people. This is my God who they're, who they're, who they're taunting. This is my God who they're coming after. They're, they, you know, they, this guy can't speak like that against my people, against my God. And something arose in him. Uh, 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 we call it in these days a holy zeal came upon him. You know, when it's one of those moments. Have you had those moments where something is going wrong and it just ain't right? And it's happening in the house of God or it's happening in, you know, somebody's disrespecting this or disrespecting the other God. And you get this zeal in your heart like, hey, that, you know, you can't be doing that. You know, and that's what happened with David. And he, as he got into the camp, the word of God says that his brother saw them. He says, I know why you're here. 
You're just a nosy. You just want, you just want to see what's going on. You know, this is big boy territory. You got to go home. You got, you got to go attend to your sheep. This, this ain't a place for you. This ain't a, a place for a, a sheep herder. This ain't a place for a young man. A, a young man meaning a insignificant, unimportant person. He says, this ain't a place for you. He says, I know why you're here. He says, you have this pride thing like, you, like, you're, like you're better. You know, and, and understand that, that Eliab was speaking obviously of the experience he just witnessed, you know, because it was in front of Eliab and his brothers that David had been anointed. It was in front of them that, that the prophet had said, we're not going to sit down until you bring me this, this young boy you got out there. And it was in front of them that, 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 that the Lord chose and anointed David. And they're watching his brothers, uh, wanting them to be the ones to be anointed, wanting them to be the ones to be chosen. But it was David, the young boy. And so Eliab, he goes back into the war and he's angry, he's upset, you know, and he, you know, he's holding on to these memories, to these thoughts. He's like, oh, I hate this kid, man. He, it should have been me. I'm the, I'm the strong one. I'm the good-looking one. I'm the one that's a warrior. You know, and so he had all these repressed feelings in his heart about his brother. And so he takes him out. He says, I know why you're here. Get out of here. You're nobody. You're this. You're that. I know your pride. And David says, as only David can answer, hey, chill out, man. Isn't there a cause? Isn't there a reason why I should be here? And I love this part because as soon as he says that and his brother's saying stuff, David just turns around and says, hey, what's going on? Because sometimes the best way to deal with stuff uh, is to uh, not let them get to you. Just to ignore it. Just to let it go. And he did that, and he went on. But the important thing of the story is that when we get to, to, to the place, and he finally gets the information, he says, what are they going to give this guy that wins? And he gets all the uh, uh, 411 of what's going on. And the word of God says that he finally presents himself in front of Saul. He says, you know what, you don't, your heart cannot be dismayed. You don't have to worry, King, because I'm going to do it. I'm going to fight in, in the honor of our, of our country. I'm going to fight in the honor of our God. I'm going to represent you, King. Give me the opportunity so that I can kill this man for, the, for us, for the Lord. And, of course, we, we read that, uh, you know, Saul says, you know what, you're, you, you can't go. You're just a young boy. You can't do this. You know, you're not trained. This, this guy you're going up against, he's been training since he, was a, since he was a kid. He's been training. He's been brought up in war. He's been brought up in the army. This guy, man, he's going to eat you for breakfast, David. Come on. You're just a kid. He says, you know what? And, then, and so we read last week that he tells him basically his resume. He says, you know what? I understand that. I know why you would feel that way. I, I, I can see why you're looking at me and you see my appearance and you really don't see much. But it's not what you see from the outside. It's what I have in the inside that matters. And so he tells them, you know what, let me give you a little history. Let me give you some information that might help you better decide. Don't make up your mind about me just yet. Why don't you hear what I've been through and then you can decide if you can use me. See, sometimes we're very easy to discard people because we don't get to know them. Because we don't really know what's inside of them. But once we get to know people from the inside and we know what God has placed in them, then we, when, then we don't mess around with the outside. Because even though the outside might not be ready, even though the outside might not be done yet. Even though the outside might be this, th th this person that we don't really know how to treat them, the inside has something that God has placed in them. And we get past the flesh and we go into the heart. And so David said, I, I've killed the bear and I've killed the lion. I've been in the field and I've, I've had some battles. And I had to be strategic and I had to learn how to how do I would defeat it because my sheep were always in danger and it was my job and my duty and, and my family was, was, was counting on me that, that if something were to happen to the sheep, we, we would lose out so much. You know, this was part of our income. This was part of our family. And, and so I had to pay special attention. And, and, and so I, I did what I could and, and, and I fought the way I was taught to fight. And that's why I can tell you right now that this man will be just like them. After... Saul hears all this information. He says, you know what? You're right. 
you know what, you, you, you do sound like the, the, the right person for this job. Why don't you, you know what, yeah, let, let's do this. Let's, let's go. And of course, you know, it's, it's, it, it was Saul that had to be in there. And it was the, Saul that had to be the king to step up and fight. But, you know, he, he kind of delegated it to David. And, 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 and so David says, okay, great. And then, then I'm going to go and, and I'm going to do this. And at that moment, Saul says, but wait, why don't you put on my armor? In verse 38, it says, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put it in a helmet of brass upon his head. And also he armed them with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. And he essayed to go. In other words, he was ready to go. So David puts all this helmet. He says, you know what? Great, you're going to go. But I'm going to put all this, I'm going to put this uniform. I'm going to take off. I'm going to bring me, bring me my uniform. Bring me my battle uniform. And so they bring... Saul's battle uniform, and he says, put it on David. He's going to go for it. He's going to fight for us. But you know what? I will feel better if you fight with my armor. And he puts him the helmet, and he puts him the armor, and he girds him with a sword upon his armor. And, and, and David is ready to go. And as he's, he's ready to go, the word of God says that David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. That word, right, that circle, that word proved. I haven't proved them. Another version says, I haven't practiced with them. Listen to that. Another, another version says, I haven't practiced with them. That word proved there originally in Bible definition means it hasn't been tested. It hasn't been tested. He says, Saul, I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I, can't, I can't use your armor because I've never practiced with your armor. I, 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 can't, I, can't, I can't go with your armor because I haven't proved it to be the t- what I need in the battlefield. He says, I, I gotta, in other words, he's saying, I got to fight with what I practice with. We used to say, well, there's a saying that says, uh, our coaches would say, practice makes perfect, Right? Practice makes perfect. Uh, another saying that our coach would say when we, would, when we were playing football, he would say, you know what, how you practice is how you will play. Have you ever heard those? How you practice is how you will, pr- how you will play. Practice makes perfect. It, it starts in the practice. You know, all these sayings about how important it's practice. You know, I wish Allen Iverson would have taken practice a little more serious. For those that are sports fanatic, you know what I'm talking about. You can Google it later. Adrian, you know what I was talking about. Practice. David says, I can't use this because I haven't practiced in it. What was David saying? He was saying, I've been in the field. And when I killed the lion and when I killed the bear, I didn't use your armor. I used what God gave me. Why would I change now that I'm in your presence? Why would I change what God gave me? For something that looks better. Why would I change what God gave me for something that looks greater? Why would I change what God gave me for something that looks shinier and more powerful and more potent? No, I can't use that. It looks good and it might serve you, but I need to use what God gave me. And sometimes that's the difference when we win outside the field. Because the training and the practice began in the field. And how we practice is how we will play. And we we have to understand that God has placed in each and every one of us gifts and abilities and ways to do things. And you don't have to change it for anything or any circumstance. You just have to learn to work with what you've practiced. It's yours. It's your identity. It's who you are. It's what God placed in you. When he shows up, he tells David, he goes, Saul, I know that you, you're giving me this. And I know this is great. But this wasn't made for me. I have my own tools. And so we have to learn that God gave us something. But what happens when people don't understand that? It's in the field of training that experience is acquired. 
It's in the, in, in the, tra- in the training experience that, 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 that the experience is acquired. Shaul was quick to dismiss David because he, 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 he didn't know about his experience because, he, because, uh, because of his appearance. But, but, but when, when, when you got to understand when God puts something in you, people may not see it. People may not recognize it, but it's there. It's there. We know that, 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 that David was not in the field because of pleasure. We know that David had been in training in the field not because of pleasure, but because of obedience. I don't, think was, I don't really think that David was super happy to be out in the field with the, with the stinky sheep and, you know, having to deal with lions and bears rolling around. I don't think David was overjoyed to learn that his brothers had certain privileges being at home while he was out in the field. But he was there in training. The countryside, the caves, the deserts are not pleasant all the time. But it is there where our character is formed. Training times are for everyone, but not everyone wants to be in the field. Get that. Training times is not for, it's for everyone, but not everyone wants to be in the fields. It is easier not to have to face things that the field brings us, but the field does not form us. If the field does not form us, we will suffer more over time. See, David had the courage and the bravery to go up against the Goliath because he had practiced in the field. He had built his experience. He had built his portfolio. He had built his curriculum. He had built his resume. He knew who he was. He had found his identity in the field. So that way when somebody tried to impose something that wasn't him, he rejected it right away because he knew who he was. He couldn't accept something greater or something lesser. He could only upset what God had given him. He recognizes, said, you know what, that's good, it's great, it might serve you, but it doesn't serve me. But why, how does he know that? Because he's in the field. Why, do I, why is that so important? I want, I want to get there. The experiences were necessary for the formation of our character, for the battles that, that we will have to face later in life. If David wants anointed, listen, chapter 16, 1 Samuel, he gets anointed in front of his brothers. If in that moment that he gets anointed, he says, whoa, whoa. He goes, why am I being anointed? You're going to be the next king. Oh, I'm the king now? Okay, great. If in that moment he takes off and he goes off to, 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 uh, to be the king, he would have failed. He would have failed miserably. miserably. Why? Because he wasn't ready. And it wasn't because he wasn't, he wasn't anointed. And it wasn't because he wasn't chosen. And it wasn't because he wasn't called. He would have failed because he was unprepared. The field prepares us. We underestimate preparation. The difference between being reactive and proactive is preparation. I love that quote. Listen to that. The difference between being reactive and proactive is preparation. When I'm not prepared, I am reactive. I, can, I, 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 I overreact. I take action. I react. But my, my reaction can kill me. It could be detriment to me. It can, it can affect me. It can hold me back. It can make me mess up. It can cause me to make decisions based on the moment. But if I'm ready, if I'm prepared, I become proactive. I can take action because I'm ready to. There's nothing to think about. I'm ready. David was ready when he showed up to the field, to to the battlefield. He didn't have to go back home and pray about it. Listen, when he, when he got to the field, he, you know, he said, what's, what's going on? Well, this guy's been challenging us for 40 days and 40 nights, twice a day. We, you know, we don't know what to do. We're pretty scared. He says, you know what, I think I need to go home and pray about this. Let me see if God wants me to do something about this cat. He didn't do that. Why? Pastor, are you diminishing prayer? Of course not. You should have been prayed already. See, you don't show up to the battlefield so that you can go back and pray. You show up to the battlefield because you've been praying. You show up because you've been praying. Because you've already been prayed for. Let me me pray about it. 
Sometimes we excuse ourselves with prayer. Listen to that. We excuse ourselves with prayer. We say, well, let me pray about that. When, when, when we get challenged in life, when we, have to, when we face something and, and, and something is presented, an opportunity, and something God says, you know what, this is your time. This is the moment that I was planning that I had destined to use your life. And sometimes when those moments present ourselves in our life, we say, you know what, well, let me pray about it. And we sound so holy when we say that. We sound so good. Whoa, man, you're a man of prayer. Wow, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and pray. Yeah, and while you go pray, I'm going to call somebody else that's already ready. That somebody's already been praying. Somebody's already been fasting. Somebody's already been doing their homework, doing their work, be being prepared. Somebody that was already in the field. And we excuse ourselves. We say, let me pray about it. But what if we, ha but what if we had showed up ready, already prayed? The truth is we use prayer to excuse the fact that we just ain't ready. David should. David was there not knowing he would have to face Goliath. What was he sent there for? To bring out Jesus in bread. What was he sent there? To see how his brothers were doing. He never thought in his mind as he's traveling to the battlefield that he would have to be the one chosen to deal with this major problem. He had no idea. He said, okay, my dad wants me to do it. He told the people from the sheep, he says, hey, I'm going to be gone for a couple of hours, maybe a day, two days tops. And while I'm gone, take care of the sheep. I got to go take some bread and some cheeses and see how my brothers are doing. There was never a thought process in his mind that I have going to show up to a battlefield and I'm going to fight the biggest problem and defeat the biggest giant in my life. But why would God somebody use somebody that was only taking bread and cheese? Because he had been in the field. Because he had been preparing himself. Because he had been in, in alone time with God. Because he had been searching his heart. Because he had been praying, God, use me. God, I know you have more than just sheep for me. God, I know you have more than just this field. God, I know you do. Uh, I, I do, but can you wait? Okay, I'll wait, God, but you, but, you, but you know you can use me. I'm ready for it. And he began to prepare himself so the moment came, he didn't have to go home and pray about it. He was ready to act. He was proactive. All the praying needed for that moment was already done in the field. Listen, the field of formation is precisely a field of tears, a field of pain, a field of loneliness, a field of sadness, of struggles, of affliction. And, 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 you know, in English, we call them growing pains. What does that saying say? What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. The field. It's the field. It was in the field where he learned to trust God as a shepherd. As a shepherd, he learned from the main shepherd on how to work and operate in faith. What well, Psalms 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staffs, they comfort me. Thy uh, preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup. Is running over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Look what he learned in the field. Let's look at that. He says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It is in the field that you learn that you lack absolutely nothing. It's in the field that you learn to completely be in contentment with your father. It's in the field that you learn that he is your shepherd and that no matter what's going on, you lack absolutely nothing. That he is your God, that he is Jehovah Jireh, the one that supplies everything. 
It is in the field that you learn. That's why David said, he maketh me lie down in green pastures. It is in the field that you learn to rest. And it is in this field that you learn to be still and know that he is God. It is in the field that you increase your faith, that you begin to understand, you know what, God is in control. So I'm just going to relax for a little bit. I'm just going to rest my soul for a minute. It is well with my soul. It's in the field. It's in the field that David said, he restoreth my soul and he leadeth me. It's in the field where you, where you find comfort in your soul, where you learn to be guided by the Spirit, when you learn to listen to the voice of God, when you learn to know when to walk and when to stay. That doesn't happen in the battlefield. The battlefield is to fight. It's in the camp. It's in the field that you learn these things so that when you're here, you know exactly what to do. You didn't have to go back. You already practiced it. That's why he said, I can't wear your armor. I've never practiced in it. It hasn't been proven in my flesh, in my body. I need to work with what I know. That's why David in the field, he said, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because it's in the field that you learn discipline and commitment. It's in the field that you learn direction. The shepherd's rod is used not only to spank the sheep, but it was used also as they were going through cliffs. And sheep, they have a tendency that if you put them to go straight, they'll keep going straight no matter if there's something there, if the road ends. If you don't believe me, look it up on sheep behavior. So the rod is always to say, this way, this way, this way. And when I was about to fall off, that's why they have a hook. Because he grabs him by the neck. He says, no, you're not going to fall. Wait, I got you. You learn that in the field. You learn discipline. You learn commitment. You learn direction. It's in the field that David learned and was able to say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no, fear no evil. See, it's in the field that you learn not to doubt, not to fear, but to trust. That he is with me. That's why he was courageous says, hey, I've killed a bear and I killed a lion. What have you killed? So he was confident because he had been in the field. See, in the field, you wrap up all your experience, all your pains, all your hurts, all those moments where you thought that it was going to be the end. But God says it wasn't the end. It was preparation. I was making something out of you. I was forming you. I was building character in you. And so when you get to the battlefield, there's no doubt that God is with you. All that is there is battled up. You have battlefield scars of the camp. You got the moment where the lion scratched you by. You know, you got the moment when the, when the bear bit you. You have the moment where, where, where you had to cry and when your brothers hated on you. You have all that in you, but you didn't use it as nothing bad. You used it as fuel because now you're ready. You said, I can't get that armor. That's not my armor. Thank you. I appreciate it. I got my own stuff that God gave me. Where? In the field. I want to start finishing up. Look at verse 33 with me. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to get against this Philistine to fight him with the art a youth. You don't have experience. You're, you're young. You're insignificant, unimportant. This guy, he's been training for his whole life. When they don't know your story, they don't know your ability. When they don't know your history and what you have lived in the field of tears, of affliction, of pain, of loneliness, they think you don't know. But look what verse 38, 39 says. And Saul armed with David with his armor and he put on, on a helmet of brass upon his head. And also he armed him with the coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor and he said to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with this. Thank you. I, I know you mean well. I know, I know that you mean well. I know that you want to, for me, to go with this. But I have not proved them. I haven't practiced with them. I haven't tested them. I don't know how to work with this. And the word of God says at the end, he says, and David put them off of him. 
David's saying, I can't walk with this because this is not my thing. I've never practiced with this. It hasn't been proven in my life. I got to fight the enemy with what has been proven in my life. See, that's why every experience that you go to, no matter how difficult it gets, there's a purpose for it. Nothing gets lost in God. There's a reason why you went through that. There's a reason why God allowed it to happen. Because now you have a, a, a testimony to say, you know what, I was in this situation and it almost broke me. But it didn't break me because that's why I'm still standing here. The enemy, what the enemy intended for bad, God used it for good. What the enemy wanted to use to bring me down and to destroy and to kill my faith, the Lord used it to make me better, to form character so that I can stand now and deal with the same situation. You know, it might be a different animal, but it's still the same situation. I know Goliath is a human, but he's just like the bear. He says, and this guy will be just like them. He said, he will be just like them. He will be just like them. See, whatever you went through, in the future, you're going to need that. So you said, oh, I recognize this problem. I went through it back then. It was a little smaller. It was a little bit more, more okay. But it looks a little bit bigger, but that's okay because I have experience. That's why people that skip the camp, they skip the field. Something comes in their life and it just breaks them. And so I couldn't handle it. Don't you know the word? The word of God says that he will never give you anything that you can't handle. You couldn't handle it not because God gave you something you couldn't handle. You couldn't handle it because you had something that you weren't prepared for. The field does that, it prepares us. It may not look like a lion over here or a bear. It might look like a Goliath, but it's just the same thing. It bleeds like it, it acts like it, it breathes like it, it attacks like it. It might look different, but this practice gave you game time experience. Listen, I finish here. The field is a training ground. There are things that come into our lives. And if we discard the field, we will fall before the giants. Our faith will be tested. Our relationship with God will be tested. Our commitment to God will be tested. Listen, don't put on someone else's armor. Learn to fight with what God gave you. Learn to fight with what God gave you. In the training field, David learned to walk with his own stuff. Turn to somebody and tell them, I got my own stuff. Come on, tell them. If you believe it, tell them, I got my own stuff. You don't got to compare yourself to nobody. You don't have to bend down to nobody. You don't have to fall back to nobody. God gave you your own stuff. You got to learn to fight with your own stuff. Many flee from the training field and they end up walking. Listen, listen, this is deep. Many flee the training field and end up walking with armor that does not correspond to them. Taking things that were not designed for them. See, people, they get, they, they get into things that were never designed for them to do. They get into armors that they were never designed for them. God says, I didn't, I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to wear that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't tell you to take on that business. I didn't tell you to do this. I didn't tell you to take that. You, you took those things because you, went, you, you, you reacted instead of being proactive. See, reaction people, they react in the moment. They make decisions on the spot. Proactive people get prepared in the field so that when it's time to play the game, they already practice. And some people, they're walking on things that were never them to be walked on. They want to move inside what is not theirs. They do not understand because there's not, they're, they're not working out. Because there's no progress. Because there's no advancement. I've seen this in a lot of ministries and a lot of ministers. They look at somebody else and they want, oh, I want that gift. I want that. That ain't yours. That ain't yours. That's his. That's hers. God gave you your own stuff. Use what you have. What did, he tell, what did he tell Moses? What's in your hand? Whatever's in your hand is what I gave you. Stop taking stuff from other people's hand. It's in your hand already. Do it with you, what you have. But see, you don't learn that by skipping the field. That's why when David was there, he's like, put on my armor. I don't recognize this stuff. So I can't even walk in it. It's not even for me. It doesn't even fit me. Why? Because I got my own stuff. 
What's your stuff look like? It looks like five rocks, you know. What? Yeah. But guess what? I got the resume to prove it. Guess what? I got the scars to show them off. You want to see some evidence? I can show you evidence. I got that. I got that bear's head mounted in my room. He said, and you know what was so beautiful? As that he cut Goliath's head off and he mounted that one too. But you got to learn to work with your stuff. They want to move inside what is not theirs and they do not understand because their things are not working out. I said, well, how come things are not working out with me? Because you're trying to do what you weren't prepared to do. You were not in the field long enough. In the field, you learn to develop what belongs to you. You get your own design. You get to know what God put in you and you only. David said, I can't face giants. I can, David said, I can face giants because I've practiced with lions and bears. David said, I could submit to hateful Saul because I live with hateful brothers. He said, David said, I can speak with authority because in the field I learned to submit to my father's authority. David said, I can face Goliath with only five stones and a slingshot because in the field I learned that it's not with my strength, it's with the strength of God Almighty. Would you stand up to your feet this morning? The field. Man, if you can see it through those eyes, it's a wonderful place. If you can see it through those eyes, you know that you're good. Tell somebody, would you stand in the field with me for a little while? Don't, don't, don't get anxious. Don't get anxious. I know, I, know, I, know that, I know what God has for you. I know what God has for my family. I know what God has for me. But tell your kids, don't get anxious. We, we got to go through some things. Why did it, you know, some people, why did this happen to us? We were doing so good. We were, we were serving God. God's like, why are you looking at it a bad thing? It's a good thing. I know it seems bad, but it's good. Why? Because I'm good, says the Lord. He says, and goodness and favor will follow you all of your days. Goodness and favor will follow you all of your days. If you just learn to be in the camp. Take your family and say, hey, let's, it's okay, we're in a camp right now. It's okay, we're being developed. It's okay, we got to go through some things. But it's going to work out. It's going to work out. This is practice time. This is practice time. Would you, would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Would you say, Father, I've gone through some things, Lord. Throughout my life, I've gone through some stuff, and Father God, you know, I, I took the wrong attitude at times. I questioned it. I, I argued with it. I was like, why? Why this? Why that? And the truth of reality is that you're good. And that what I thought was something else, what the enemy tried to put in my heart, that would be something else. Father God, you're like, no, 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 this is me. This is me. I'm doing something. I'm forming you. I'm, I'm building you. I'm giving you your own stuff. I'm giving you your own things. I'm giving you... I'm making you a warrior. Don't be afraid of the lions and bears. If you can graduate from that, you'll learn to fight with, with Goliaths. Father, we pray this morning that we learn to train in the, in the camp. We learn, Father God, to be in the cave. We learn to walk in the desert, Father God, knowing that thy rod and thy staff will guide us knowing that although I walk in the shadow of valley of death I will fear no evil knowing that you make me life in green pastures knowing father God that you are my God and I lack nothing it's okay if I have to be in the field God for my eyes will see your favor and your mercy and your goodness follow me all of my days. I'm willing to train. I'm willing to practice. I'm willing to do and go through whatever I need to go through. Father God, just make me a giant killer. Just make me a giant killer, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person, every single family in this place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Praise God. Do you receive the word this morning? Amen. Who's willing to be in the field a little longer? Amen. Praise God. So be it. Pastor Donnell, I'll give it over to him. So he can uh, just bless us this morning through our tithes and offerings and just pour his uh, blessing upon our lives. Church, don't forget that we are, uh, we're, they are now having the Monday uh, prayer service here. You're welcome to gather with them. It's, you know, it's an opportunity. We've been desiring to gather. It's a little bit different than we're on 